Everyone, first of all, I have to apologize. Unfortunately, my voice is significantly more monotonous than the previous speaker, but please don't take that as a lack of interest, because I feel this topic is incredibly important, and I hope that it is interesting and potentially inspiring to some of you here today. We're here to talk about a project that began earlier this year and how it serves as an example of where education should and can go. Detroit Treads emerged out of a pretty unique course offered here at U of M called Integrated Product Development. Every year, this course challenges groups of students to address a problem statement, not with a paper or a presentation, but with an actual product and a business plan to begin marketing, producing, and selling this product. This year's problem statement was to design a profitable and eco-friendly mini business for CAS Community Social Services. There are a few design constraints. First, primary materials must be taken from the waste stream. And second, all processes must be completed using unskilled labor. Now, this is an incredibly broad challenge. And to students like us, we were raised in an era of education where questions have one answer, where courses revolve around tests and exams, where getting an A is the ultimate mark of success. IPD is very unique in that grades are more or less ignored. Students are forced to confront uncertainty, to fail and succeed in the creative process, and ultimately create something that can impact the world around them. After four and a half years at the College of Engineering here, this was only the second time I was asked to build something. And it was the first time I was asked to build something of value. This is representative of a fundamental problem in education, a divide between the academic and the real world. <laughs> students spend, <laughs> everyone here knows this. <laughs> students spend hundreds, if not thousands of hours working on repetitive homework assignments and projects to get to this one answer and then forget it a week later. Now bridging this gap, is essential to improving both the academic and the real world. And there are many ways to do it through entrepreneurship, project-based learning, industry involvement, case studies. But we're here today to talk about one that we feel is significantly important to the U of M community, and that is through the creation of social ventures. Social ventures are emerging as a powerful force in the Detroit community. Some people are asking, can Detroit become the next Silicon Valley of social entrepreneurship? And I'm here to say, with the support of this community, the answer is yes. Already you may have heard of some of these ideas up on the screen behind me, and plenty more are coming. And the Ross School of Business recently created the nation's first social venture capital fund. All of this puts U of M students in a unique position to create impactful social ventures. And within this environment, we work to create TREDS. I want to highlight three important points about TREDS. First of all, TREDS is profitable. Profit has become this evil word, but it is essential to creating sustainable ventures. The profits created from TREDS will be used by CCSS to reinvest in their workers and further their charitable mission. Second, it's three-dimensional. The talk of a manufacturing rebirth in the US is awesome. It's become increasingly popular and politicized, but it is essential to job creation. We must encourage the ne next great wave of entrepreneurs to move away from bits and back to atoms to create the products that revolutionize our world. And finally, it has a social mission, TREDS is a product designed to create jobs in the Detroit community. It has a purpose beyond profits. I want to be up here talking to you about just another flip-flop. So in summary, TREDS is a social venture that emerged out of an academic course. It is the perfect example of where education should and can go. So the question is, what can you all here today do to have a lasting impact outside of the classroom while you're here at one of the greatest universities in the world? And to get you started, Julia is going to talk, talk you through the creative process we use to come up with the trends. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. The birth of trends was due to successful design thinking, a term that Tim Brown, CEO of, Ide of Ideo, um, coined as the effective combination of design, business, and social studies to create enriching designs and ideas. Our initial phase involved researching and understanding the culture of the city of Detroit. And beyond asking ourselves the question of what would people want to buy, the question of what would be an appropriate product for the people of Detroit to make was a more crucial question for us to answer. Our three initial, initial ideas uh, and solution to the problem statement, as well as that very question, were first, a cardboard magazine holder, two, a modular photo frame, and three, sandals made out of tires. And it was quite obvious that a product made of automotive parts would be most suitable for not only our buyers, but also the workers. 
The real potential of this idea, then, was the fact that it embodied the essence of Detroit's long-known legacy as a motor city. <laughs> The process of creating treads can be seen in the simplified graphic display. The first step involves the collection of waste tires around Detroit's neighborhood, and to send these tires to a third party, they will shred it into minute particulates. These minute particulates are then mixed with a type of resin and then poured into a top and bottom polyurethane molds. Once compressed and cured, um, these soles are removed from the molds and are assembled together with, with straps made out of seat belts, which are collected from nearby junkyards and, of course, washed um, before final assembly. <laughs> As a team of master and undergrad students with no shoemaking background or whatsoever, we now look back and sometimes think to ourselves, how on earth did we come up with that? Because just five months ago, we had no clue on how to execute this idea. And so this is where the benefits of placing outside your comfort zone really proves itself. As a painter and graphic designer, I never dreamed of creating treads, let alone some of my teammates who are business students. But classes such as IPD uh, push students like us to integrate design and entrepreneurship and to explore the, uh, the possibilities that previously seemed impossible. One of our biggest challenges was to channel our creativity towards foreign areas and to ultimately use it to create an impact. For me, particularly an art student, I learned to create for more than just aesthetics. I learned what the meaning of, of creating with a purpose. For the process of creating treads was beyond just making a successful design, design product. It was creating a meaningful brand identity. And so in a very blunt way, we were all taught that being creative should encompass the ability to solve all kinds of problems, and that this was certainly not to be done alone. Thank you. As students, we are a product of our environment. We learn that what makes our degrees worthwhile and attractive in the job market, and how to properly leverage that to our advantage when we enter the workforce. However, I'm here to tell you now that there is so much everyone in this room can do right now to make a difference in not only your experiences here at the university, but also the quality of this community. The one problem, however, is trying to find that one thing that pulls us out of our comfort zone, as Julia mentioned, and really challenges us to be more than what we can be while still fulfilling what we are. As a team of engineers, business students, and art and design majors, we had very different roles initially. And I can tell you now, those roles were initially defined by our degrees. But we soon realized why we were in this multidisciplinary course to begin with and had nothing to do with our degree affiliations. I mean, sure, we wanted to apply what we learned in class and in an actual environment that supports it, but at the same time, the same reason that you guys are all here today, we wanted to adventure out. We wanted to take what we learn and do something more with it. We wanted to be inspired by someone who maybe had a different background, but still was trying to solve the similar or a same problem. As we got more involved in the actual problem itself, we realized something bigger. We couldn't just lean on one another. We had to actually take it one step further. Because no matter how smart you are, trying to solve a real world problem using by the book tactics will only serve to frustrate you. And we learned that firsthand. So what we did was we looked and sought the actual advice of our professors and industry leaders. And let me tell you now, there are so many resources available to every single student right now. You could literally take the faintest hint of a good idea and take that and hash it out with your entire group in a collaborative workspace until you have a finished idea, and then take that, print it out in 3D, scan it back in in 3D, make any changes that you need, and then produce it with those advisors and industry experts. 
And then when you're done, you can film it and create a fancy commercial like you just saw, and then distribute it out to the world as a group of individuals. So the problem then becomes, what if it's so obvious and so easily accessible, why don't more people use it to their advantage in their projects? Well, just like you can't put two sticks next to each other and create fire, the, you can't expect that merely putting the coexistence of opportunity and resource in the same area that you would create impact. You have to be the actual people that make that impact. You have to be the emotion that creates motion and the catalyst that drives you to and through whatever it is that you have to accomplish. As a group of individuals, we had a responsibility to ourselves and one another to maintain that motive, momentum and motivation and to also preserve each person's individual perspective. And at the same time, also be very mindful of the overlaps of, between these perspectives. Because in these overlaps, our team found passion. And by passion, I mean the ability to blur the lines between art, engineering, and business. And through this opportunistic awareness of these three characteristics, we were able to make our art more efficient, our engineering more elegant, and our business more sustainable. So in the end, remember that no matter what it is you're trying to accomplish, you are not alone here. And that whatever it is, wherever you are, that you have a great community of university alumni supporting you. So surround yourself with people who support good ideas and are passionate about them, and be a product of that environment. In fact, give back to that environment, change it just as much as it's changed you. Because in the end, that's how you really benefit from the role and affiliation that everyone here enjoys as a part of the University of Michigan. Thank you guys very much, and uh, we're, we are Detroit Treads. Oh, no, no.